Hey everybody, it's Wednesday, May 29th. You're here at the DEI Community Working Group call for chaos. Uh, good to see everybody. I'm glad you're here. I'm gonna share my screen with everybody. Here we go, open my chat. Um, if you have not been to this meeting before, which everyone here has, but I will say it anyway, this is part of the chaos, chaos code of conduct. So just keep that in mind um, as you interact I'm getting a phone call from my daughter, so I will have to decline that right now because I, I could take it, but that'd be weird. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I would like you, if you would like to add your name and tell us what time of year is your favorite. Um, I, I feel like spring is a, is a popular one. I almost put spring because I do like the flowers, but I also like the summer flowers too. Yeah. Summer, yeah. The problem with summer flowers sometimes is at the end of summer. It's just, they get like so big and like, I don't know, there's, there's so much sometimes, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? Like you look yeah. at your garden, you're like, ugh, I just need to mow this whole thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't feel that. Uh. <laughs> I just let it go. I, <laughs> you pretty, do what you're going to do. <laughs> um, aw, Georg. Very inclusive answer. Don't want to leave anybody out. All the so I will say I will add something to when I now Allison I know you're in Wisconsin, but you really didn't have it. I don't think you had it this year, but when I was in Eau Claire for seven years, which is considerably further north than Madison. Um, but we had a, a season that we called the season of melt. So it was kind of somewhere in between winter and spring and it lasts like it lasts like a month and a half or two months. It's just where everything is like muddy yeah, and I've heard gross. It's like mud season. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a pleasant time of the year. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could also interpret this as like what month is your favorite? Like if you have a favorite month or holiday or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's good too. Yiga says there's still only two seasons in Nigeria. <laughs> It's like rain and sun, is that <laughs> the two seasons? Yeah. <laughs> That's all right, I can get behind that. Okay, um, let's go ahead and start. I put this item on here. I was just curious, I'm not sure if Adiinka is here today. I do not see her. I was just curious if anyone had heard any feedback from any of the applicants now that we have added the new metrics on here. So if anybody is in a position that they would know that, <laughs> if maybe any Badgers have done any new applications yet, I don't know. I was just curious. I thought I'd throw it out there and see if we've heard anything. I have not, so. I had my only, I, I was thinking, and I'm not suggesting making any changes to anything, but like the, the one, the public health and safety one that we point people to I, I, it's great. Um, I think we just need to keep track to make sure that that public health and safety site stays up and doesn't get more complicated itself. Yeah. Because we have Good. this like independent group now. You get what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, all of a sudden it becomes really complex. Right, that's, right, right. That's a possibility. Or they just no longer maintain the site or something. Yeah, like yeah. If it didn't gain traction or if they don't have the bandwidth to keep it going, yeah. Yep. Everything else we, for lack of a better word, control. Yeah, yeah that's the only one that's kind of out mm -hmm. of our control. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. And I don't know, uh, I don't, I don't know how we should add that in, like, where would we add in that check, like, in our whole process? Is, is it like, just maybe open an issue? Or like, is there a way to open automatic issues in GitHub? Does anybody know? What do you mean? Like, on a certain date? Or? Like, to, ch like, just the issue would be like, go to the public health pledge site. And right, exactly. Still, <laughs> still like, it would just pop up magically and that would be the reminder or i guess we could do a reminder in slack too i think you can do reminders like oh idea like remind me in three months to check this thing i have no idea okay i'll, I'll poke around with that 
or if anybody knows, they can put it in yeah. here too. It's just one of those things that's like, I don't know how we will resurface that and we should, so. Yeah, scheduling issue creation. You can use GitHub Actions to create an issue on a regular basis. See, if Sean was here, he'd be like, oh, an action. <laughs> he knows, oh, that's his answer to everything. Like, oh, a GitHub Action, you can do that. Yeah. Okay, so we'll look into that. Maybe Sean knows how to do that. Okay, here's the answer is yes. Well, spell the word time. Oh, awesome, thank you. Yeah. Yay. At least that would be somewhat of a reminder then it would just pop out of nowhere, mm -hmm. so. Yep. Cool, thanks, Matt. All right, the next one on our agenda is the accountable leadership metric. I want to just resurface this again. Um, I didn't see any. We didn't talk about it last week. Oh, okay, okay, perfect. <laughs> So um, I think that it follows the new uh, format, but I don't know. Do we want to take a minute in this meeting? We have, we have a, enough people, I think, to just take a couple minutes and look at this. Would that be okay with everybody? Yeah, that's fine with me. I would just like to make movement on this somehow. So there's the doc. And I will keep the recording going, so if you're watching this, you can fast forward. I have a quick question about this blurb right here. I know we wanted to add this to every single metric, but I feel like I haven't seen it very often in metrics. So is this something that we, like, what are we, do we want to add that in with like the whole data use stuff that comes at the bottom or? So it's, <clears throat> you could delete it here. It's meant to just um... remind. Yeah, it's meant to remind you that a metric, even if it's not from the DEI working group, may have implications for diversity, equity, and inclusion. Does that does that blanket statement show up anywhere? No, it's it's. I think the statement is really just meant for you as the author to reflect on how this impacts DEI. Oh, 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 oh! I forgot about that. Okay, I know exactly what you're talking about now. So that is in the template, not for publication. Okay, mm -hmm. I was thinking it was for the people implementing. No, the but... only <clears throat> the only text we have is that the um, data. Got you. The data. The piece. ethics. The ethics thing. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Totally forgot about that.
And just for a point of context, in case people aren't familiar with where this came from, this was a result of, uh, what's the name of that, XZ yeah. project, where the, one of the leaders kind of screwed over the project. So this is about trust um, and holding leaders accountable and like minimizing the risk involved with um, just trusting somebody to be in a, in a leadership position that has access to everything and could just like delete your whole project if they wanted to. <laughs> so, so that's what this one's about. So it's, um, it's very similar to the inclusive leadership, um, but it, a lot of the questions are similar, but it does, it's coming from a different point of view or it has a different purpose. So it's more about protecting the project than kind of protecting the leaders, if that makes sense. And Matt, sorry, one quick question about the template. Do, do the references and the contributors also get folded up with the rest of the details? Okay, so we should put the end here. Okay. Okay, perfect. Thank you. I have a question about this metric as I'm reading through it. And the label is, or the name is accountable leadership and the rest of it talks about the risk associated with having leaders or trusting leaders do we want to center keeping leaders accountable or do you want to center assessing the risk that's a good question uh, Emma Irwin is the one that kind of brought up this idea for one. Um, and I think she was calling it trust, leader, tr trust leaders, tr I don't know, leadership trust or something like that. So we could go back to that sort of a, uh, a lens if we want to name it that. Or did you have another idea, Georg, about what we could name this? leadership risk or something? So from this observation that we're talking about two different things in this metric, bring them together. I personally like the more positive aspect of uh, accountability and that we change the language to how is the project keeping leaders accountable? But it if the focus is on risk, because that is what the hot topic is with the incident at XYZ, then maybe we should use the risk as a term that people gravitate towards right now. That's a more of a marketing decision. <laughs> but I like that too, because <clears throat> calling it like leadership accountability or accountable leadership. Maybe my daughter's calling you too, Matt. <laughs> She's just calling everybody on this call. I gotta make a phone call back here in a second. But, um, cause then it becomes like, it's something that you will have to measure. Like, how do you, cause right now it doesn't feel like there's, like, I'm not sure what we're measuring here. Yeah, that's true. That's valid. Maybe towards the end, yes, but. I mean, it is kind of one of those where it's you're looking at how many things you're doing or what you're doing to address the issue. So like inclusive leadership, it's not really a, a purely something you can purely measure aside from here are all the things we're doing to try to build in this inclusive leadership into our project. So I feel like maybe it's something like 
that, where it's uh, just uh, causing projects to, um, to, to self-reflect and just prioritize or think about this, this thing. And if they're measuring maybe the, the amount of things they're doing, like, okay, we're doing more for this than we did last year, or we've implemented these things that we never did before. Like something like that, I think would be a way to measure their progress. So is it a, <clears throat> a measure of the people who are in leadership positions or is it a measure of the communities um, like hmm. structure? Good question. It, the way you were talking, it was the latter to me. That's kind of what I was thinking too, but when we look at the filters, that's looking more of like the actual number of people I would like to look at this as the latter myself. Like how do we, as a community, think about <clears throat> building accountability into our project? Because then it, then it even becomes like a candidate if the DEI project badging stuff grows, like as a measure in the future, like a nice reflective measure, like how as a, a community are we doing this stuff? Yeah, agreed. So in that case, we would not really have this these filters. I right? wouldn't have the filters, but I think the questions below the introspection stuff, those are very much along those lines. Yeah, agreed. I saw Yiga was given a thumbs up a minute ago too. Okay, so let's okay, let's see if we can maybe take this whole thing out then. We, we might have to have the same conversation about inclusive leadership then because these are all in that metric as well. And I think that metric is also kind of around what the community is doing to build that build inclusive leadership into their project governance. So just to, something to think about. Do we have other comments on this? I can uh, take the action item to continue to iterate on this and bring it back to this group one more time next week, if that makes sense. Okay, and when Matt gets back, if he has anything else to add, then we will add it. <laughs> All right, so the next one on our list is just a reminder. This came from Alice. Um, she mentioned it yesterday at the weekly community meeting. I thought it, it would be appropriate to bring it here. Um, just a reminder that the Linux Foundation does offer travel and attendance scholarships. Um, so if you have not looked into this and you really want to attend one of their conferences, of which there are many, uh, this is how you would go about doing it. You can just re request some travel funds. You do not need to be a speaker at the conference. Um, you just need to f apply. So just a reminder, in case you didn't know that was a thing, that's a thing. So check that out. Uh, questions about that? Anybody? Okay. And I'm not sure who put this on here, maybe Matt did, but he is not here. A DEI.MD workshop to help people get started. Oh, that's a good idea. What do we think about that? It's great. Yeah, I like that too, Peculiar. We could talk about, um, yeah. Talk about how to build one, why we do it. Because I'm wondering if it is getting people stuck a little bit. Because uh, there, there's a lot to think about. If, you, if you're a project that hasn't considered any of the four metrics um, really in the past, then that's going to be a lot of work to 
um, if you if you don't have anything to say, like you're going to want to put stuff in there and start doing things so you have something to say in the in the file. So maybe that's also um, been a barrier for folks that they feel like they have to implement a bunch of things before they can really publish that. So, yeah. What do people think about this? What would you put in here, put in this workshop? If you were going to build this agenda, what would you add? So we don't really put any kind of um, expectations on what this file should really look like, like how many things are appropriate to put in, uh, how many initiatives to list. So I don't know. Hi, Miss Beth. Hi, you guys. So, so yeah. I was thinking um, along the lines of, because it's a di.md um, workshop, uh, say things like self-assessment, like the implicit association test to help participants recognize what biases they have, um, you know, just basically understanding their bias, probably real-world scenarios, start case studies and how were they applied, you know, then DEI principles, their successes, their failures, just things that would help people understand DEI better. Um, strategies for promoting DEI, inclusive leadership, what are their hiring or recruitment processes, and of course, accountability. So things like that would help, in my opinion. Yes, yes. Yeah, I think those are all great, great ideas. Yeah, because it is kind of hard to, to, to do those self assessments sometimes, um, especially if you're not really accustomed to doing those introspection activities. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just point them towards, you know, some of them that exist net, and then they can further understand themselves you know the reason the reason why they act the way they do sometimes and you know how to get better at it so yes yeah that's a great idea <laughs> what do others think what what do they think what do you think would be helpful to folks when they're trying to build this dei.md file and get a badge I think the ideas we already have are good. When I put myself in the shoes of someone who would like to have a di.md file, I would want to understand the background, why it's important, because I may have to defend it from or against uh, objections that other community members have and I want to have the arguments for this is why my project needs the di.md file showing where it is used and how other projects are using it gives me examples to point to and to say hey look GitLab is using it and this other project is using it. We should be doing this as well. And then I will need help to actually fill it out and having a workshop where we go through metric by metric, discuss what the metric is, what it shows, some examples for how to document it in the di.md file. And then Maybe as part of the workshop, I get a um, someone else to discuss it with, and we can do breakouts and say, "Here is um, someone from our community who is willing to help you think this through, who you can brainstorm with, who helps you review it on the fly." Those are my ideas for a workshop.
So do you think it would be reasonable to, at the end of the workshop, say, if you're a project that has not even started one because you don't even really know where to start, at the end of this workshop, you'll have a draft that you can take back to your community. Like, would that be a goal, do we think? Is that reasonable? Yeah, Georg's nodding. Okay, let's just put that in here. I really like this part of um, giving them tools to defend it because it is new and you know change is hard and people uh, don't often like change so I think that's a great point yeah it might also be helpful to not just defend it but also here are all the positives here are all of the reasons why you want to implement it so that you give them the language to use. Yeah. I wonder also, would it be helpful to have another project that has gone through it be part of the workshop? Like from, like chaos has gone through it from our, like we have our own DEI.MV file and obviously we are invested in um, building these out, but I, I'm just wondering if we had a project who's already been badged and already gone through the process, if they would be willing, you guys saying yes. Um, yeah, to help us just kind of put this on as like a, hey, we are, we were in your shoes too, you know, kind of a more ob objective, okay. Yeah, hearing use cases like that is always a powerful, powerful message. Yeah. This is a lot. <laughs> it's going to be a long workshop. <laughs> it's like a day long. <laughs> I think this would be great. This would be really great. Do we have folks on this call that might be interested? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm completely taking this over from Matt. I don't know if he, had, if he had ideas, but I'm just wondering if there are people on this call who might be interested in helping like actually build out the agenda and um, help implement this, help organize. If it's gonna be a series of them, if it's gonna be one, I don't know. Or like a, here's an intro, and then here's a, okay, we're giving you all the tools to go do this, go do this thing, and then the next workshop is, okay, bring it to us and we'll review, like if we split this up, you know, I don't know. Um, okay, so let's just put in here, if you're interested. Yeah, I saw reactions from Giga, Mary Blessing, and Peculiar. Oops. And who else? Peculiar. Peculiar, okay. I'll put me on here. I'm guessing probably Matt. Since he probably brought that up. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. What else do we have to talk about today? Your agenda item here. What else is on your minds? I think it would be actually pretty funny if we all just ended the meeting and then Matt came back and we were all gone. <laughs> Sorry, Matt. You missed out. 
I can <laughs> offer a quick update from the code of conduct committee if that's of interest. Excellent. To anyone. Yeah, excellent. So we, uh, several weeks ago, or months ago, we were looking at um, what to do about leaders in an open source project, or specifically in the chaos project, who act in a way that is against the code of conduct, but when they're not in a chaos space. So they're not on a Zoom call, they're not in our Slack, they're not on our mailing list, they're not at our event. But because they are recognized as chaos leaders, should we still hold them accountable and extend the code of conduct to apply outside of chaos spaces? And we discussed this in the community call and we got some feedback outside of that and even talked with Sage and it's very tricky and there is no precedence for this really that we could find and because of the pushback we received and how tricky it is we said we'll focus on something easier <laughs> it's not urgent that we solve this it was an idea we thought we could but apparently there's a lot more to it we learned and so we shifted gears and are currently working on reporting and responding process procedures. And we're getting inspiration from the, I think, Python, Python community. The elastic. The elastic. Oh, elastic. Uh -huh. Thank you. Now, yeah, Mary Blessing is also heavily involved in this. Thank you, Georg. That's awesome. I was kind of wondering about that too. And it is so tricky. I don't, I don't know what the answer is. Um, I, I did have one idea that I don't know if it's a good one or not. I don't know. Um, but I was thinking we could, we could pull the community and just see how the community feels about where the line is. Um, so obviously not a perfect solution at all, but um, I would be curious to know if it is a, uh, a um, loud minority that is the pushback or if it is actually like most people in the community feel like that should be limited. The reach of chaos should be limited to its leaders. So I don't know, just a thought we could do a, a quick survey of the community. When we run a survey, what's the engagement from the chaos community? How much do we get responses? It's been a while since we've run one. Um, we are actually that's great that you bring that up because we are thinking about running um, another. So last, not last October, the October before that, we ran our community pulse survey. So uh, we wanted to figure out just generally how people were feeling about being in the community. Um, so it's time to redo that probably in the fall, we were thinking, because um, our community has changed and grown quite a lot since then. So we, I mean, we could add it to that or we could just do a separate one altogether. I think Chaos Africa might be also thinking about doing a, a similar pulse survey. So I don't want to uh, do the survey fatigue, but um, that poll is a little bit, I think, different than just like, here's a survey, fill it out if you want, because it's, it's pretty important you know, uh, to, to have voices heard on the, on that topic. So um, to your, uh, quite, to your original question about how many people, uh, I don't know that I know that. I don't know that I know the percent. I could probably go back and figure out just based on like how many people were in Slack versus how many people filled out the survey. Um, but I don't know. That's a great question. I don't know. All right. My concern is that the loud min minority, if that is what's going on, may also show up in the poll just the same. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. And since we are decide we decided to leave it be, I don't want to poke the bear. Yeah. And cause more 
and focus our attention on where we can make a real difference because we don't have a reporting procedure and responding procedure. I think we should have that in the chaos project and that's way more important than discussing adding three words to the code of conduct or something. It's totally valid. Yes, makes total sense. So, okay, sounds good. Anybody have questions for Georg or Mary Blessing for that matter too? Mary Blessing has a question <laughs> for herself. Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, I, I do not have questions for Georg. I I wasn't sure if it's okay to share here, but it's, it was regarding the um, ambassador um, program that you and I have been working on. And I just wanted to hear what people think of, um, is it maybe better using a Google form <laughs> if they were to um, try to sign up for um, a program like that, or would they prefer the GitHub form? <laughs> Sorry, we kind of lost you there for a minute. Very right, blessing. Yeah, so I wanted to hear people start on if they prefer um, signing up for such a program via the Google Forms or the GitHub Forms. You know, just to help us make a decision. <laughs> yeah. Do do people have opinions on this that are on this call? Google Forms versus GitHub Forms for Ambassador. Do we think one will be more accessible than the other? Do, I don't have any experience with GitHub Forms at all. I've never filled one out, so I don't know what that experience is like. Okay, so I think that, um, hi everyone, I think that Google Forms are more accessible across board for people, and it might just be easier for them to use, um, but that depends on what the team is looking at um, for GitHub Forms, but it depends on what the team is looking at, but I think Google Forms might just be easier. Does anybody know if you fill out a GitHub form, like where that information goes? Does it go to an issue? Does it go to a discussion? Does anybody know where the actual data goes? I think I think I might have done one in the past, and I think it um, it comes up as an issue. And a maintainer gets to like review and you know, um, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if we could, yeah. Um, I was just thinking for privacy sake, I don't, I don't know if we could have it go to a private repo somewhere. Um, Cause I feel like there might be some personal information in that form certainly name and um, email and that kind of thing. So we may not want that GitHub form if if we're planning to, yeah, okay. Go into an issue. Yeah, whereas a spreadsheet that the Google Forms is collecting, we could at least share the spreadsheet with folks if we needed, you know, people to be able to look at it. Okay. I guess that's your answer, Mary Blasey. <laughs> Seems like we're all on the board for Google. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we have a couple minutes left. Anybody else have anything they want to share or ask about or comment on or? One last thing, it is best. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, someone did reach out, and I think the the uh, badge a badger, and they were badging this event, and they weren't sure if it's an open source project. So I think I checked is the community, the C plus plus community. So I I don't know if I um, if this has been said, but do we also like badge non open source events as well? 
right? Um, yeah, I think it's just like more of like a question. Um, yeah, you know, that is a question that has come up several times um, because I think the way that it's worded right now is that's a question we ask, is this an open source technology? Um, and I, you know, I don't think it really matters. I think if, as long as the information that we're asking about is publicly available on a website and it's general, like, I mean, generally tech, I feel like still fits. If it was something not in tech that was also not open source, then I don't know, we would have to maybe have a conversation, but I think it's fine. What do other people think? I'm sorry, I missed the question. Yeah, so um, Mary Blessing got a question about a C++ event, which is not technically an open source uh, language, and those projects are, um, yeah, so it's technically not open source, but it's still tech-ish thing, so, <laughs> so she's wondering if this is something we can badge officially, even though it's not open source. Like, how important is that bit of it to us in our badging? I have two questions for this. One is, can we do this? Are there, is there anything in the metrics that is uniquely open source or does this apply to all events equally? Since it's open to, yeah, it's, it's mostly around the event itself, not the projects that are represented or anything like that. So um, I don't think there's anything in there that is specific to open source, honestly. Yeah, and so the second question then is, so we answered, can we do it? Now, do we want to do it? And that might be a question of resources. Do we, and also it's a branding. Do we want to keep the chaos event badge branded as an open source related event badge? Or do we want to broaden it and second, do we have the resources if we get more communities coming in? My thought is um, it's always good to start small in a niche and become really well established. And for the chaos DI badge to be very well recognized in our open source space before we branch out, just like Facebook started with one university and then a few universities and you needed special invites before it opened up to the general population it had to create critical mass within that small target market and this is a go-to-market strategy discussion that i'm having here with it, with you all and how well is the chaos di badge recognized and accepted within open source are we ready to branch out and make it more widely um, known and applicable? This is a marketing go to market conversation. And then the other one is the resource. Do we have enough people? Can we scale this up? I have, I have thoughts but I wanna give space for others. I, we only have two minutes left, but if there's anybody else, I wanna give them a chance first. Um, yes, so Yiga says, I think, also think our answer is in our name. So I think Yiga, you're, you're kind of leaning toward only doing open source events, that's all we do, okay. Okay. And I, I do have mixed feelings about it and I don't know how strong they are. I feel like we have come to a place where if we did want to branch out, we could do that because I feel like we have a, a pretty big pool of reviewers. Now we have almost 30. Um, I think people. Yeah. I think we could if we wanted to. I'll just leave it at that. And let me says it could signal that we are willing to expand badgeable events and projects to non open source ones. If we want that, then I think it's fine. Yeah, so really it, it comes down to if we want to do it. 
And I don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I don't know. Do we? I don't know. Okay, Maybe. so I think I'll speak to this from a DEI perspective. You know, in as much as I agree with George from like the marketing perspective and go to market strategy, right? But if we want to look at the DEI perspective, um, I would look at it in a way whereby, uh, so for example, um, events, for example, in events more accessible, making them more diverse, you know, for example, the questions where we have where it says, um, can mothers come for your event? It's then not replay. So it's in a way, um, different communities within tech that are not open source now are aware of, you know, DEI things that they need to look at. So we can also look at it from a DEI perspective if we're, you know, going to do that or if we want to do that. That could be a plus to say that we're making the tech community more DEI. I don't know the word to use there, but more DEI enabling or if that's the word. But yes, that would be the angle to look at it from. So we have two angles right now. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I mean, if the whole point is to make events more accessible in tech, then yeah, I think we are, we have done that in open source and continue to do that in open source. So um, I also kind of feel like there's so much crossover, you know, like there are conferences that talk about um, open source technologies and non-open source technologies. So like, where would that event fall? Um, yeah. Georg saying we promote DEI across the tech industry. Yeah, we helped um, all of them. Mm -hmm. Those were language suggestions. Um, what we could be saying. Okay, let's put that in here. Do you want? Can I copy that and just drop it in here? Yeah, of course. Then I'm not saying I, I'm for this. I want to be very mindful about our resources, and I'd rather have something that is small really well done very well respected then stretching ourselves thin trying to do too much and then it falls apart because we're not we can't deliver on the promise so how about if we bring this to the community meeting and see what others think. Does that sound reasonable? Sorry, Mary Blessing, this one event is <laughs> really causing some some uh, conversation in our community. No worries. I mean, are that are they going to be okay if we say hold on a minute? <laughs> like, I don't know when their event is, but I guess we'll just yeah, we'll just go with it. Okay, cool. We are over time. Sorry about that, everybody. Three minutes, but uh, appreciate the conversations. Great conversations today, and um, hope you have a great rest of your day. We'll see y'all here next week or two weeks. No, next week. Yes, next week. This is a weekly call. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone.